muscles are made up of thousands and thousands of individual muscle fibers. And those muscle fibers are arranged in motor units. And motor units are recruited in size order from low threshold to high threshold. And the low threshold motor units contain only small numbers of muscle fibers, while the high threshold motor units control many thousands of muscle fibers. As the level of effort that we exert in a given muscular contraction increases, we progress from low threshold motor units to high threshold motor units. So only those contractions that involve high levels of effort will involve the recruitment of high threshold motor units and the activation of those muscle fibers that are controlled by those motor units. Now, the level of mechanical tension is what actually determines the uh, level of muscle growth after a given set of muscular contractions. And the force velocity relationship states that when we move more slowly, when the fiber contracts more slowly, it produces a greater level of mechanical tension. So in order for us to increase the size of the muscle fibers controlled by high threshold motor units, we need to exert a high level of effort and we need to be moving slowly. However, the force velocity relationship is not the only relationship that determines how much mechanical tension a muscle fiber produces at any given point in time. The length tension relationship also affects how much force the fiber can produce and therefore has an influence on the level of hypertrophy that happens after a workout or a given set of muscular contractions. Now the length tension relationship is actually made up of two separate relationships. It's made up of the active length tension relationship and the passive length tension relationship. And it's actually the passive length tension relationship that is more important for understanding how muscle growth happens after strengthening. And the passive length tension relationship is very simply the fact that as we stretch a muscle fiber or as we stretch certain structures within the muscle fiber, including titan and collagen, then the muscle fiber exerts a greater level of tension. And that tension contributes to the uh, overall stimulus that happens to the muscle fiber and causes it to increase in size. After strength training, muscle fibers increase in both diameter and in length. And the increase in diameter, which causes an increase in cross-sectional area, together with the increase in length, cause an increase in muscle fiber volume. And this increase in volume is what contributes to the overall increase in muscle size and therefore in muscle mass. Now it can seem strange to think about muscle fibers increasing in length because obviously the points that the muscle attaches to the skeleton don't change as a result of strength training. However, the increase in muscle fiber length doesn't necessarily lead to as great an increase in muscle length because the muscle fibers don't run longitudinally along the muscle, they actually run at an angle. So increases in muscle fiber length don't cause as big an increase in muscle length as we might initially expect. Additionally, when the muscle itself does increase in length, it simply bulges out from the skeleton while retaining the same attachment points that it did before strength training. We can produce force with a muscle both with and without the contribution of passive tension. For example, when we produce force while the muscle is shortening, then there is no passive tension because the passive structures inside the muscle fibers are not being stretched. In contrast, when we produce force while the muscle is lengthening, then the passive structures inside the muscle are being stretched and therefore they contribute to passive tension. And this allows the individual muscle fibers to produce a greater level of mechanical tension than they would do if they were producing force in the same uh, exercise or movement, but when they were short. When we involve passive tension in a set of muscular contractions, then two things happen. Firstly, the amount of muscle growth that happens tends to be greater than it would be in a similar set of contractions but without that passive tension. We call this stretch mediated hypertrophy. So essentially by stretching the passive structures inside the muscle fibers we've achieved 
greater overall muscle growth, as in increases in muscle fibre volume, than we would have done without including that passive tension. And secondly, we tend to experience a preferential increase in muscle fibre length compared with diameter. So when there's no passive tension, most of the growth of the muscle fibre tends to occur as an increase in diameter. However, as we increase the amount of tension that comes from the passive structures, more and more of that growth comes from the length. And if almost all of the uh, tension comes from the passive structures, then most of the growth will come from an increase in fibre length. We can observe preferential increases in muscle fibre length after strength training because of greater levels of passive tension during the muscular contractions that comprise that strength training in three different areas of the strength training literature. Firstly, we can look at comparisons that have been made between full and partial ranges of motion during normal strength training. Secondly, we can compare eccentric only and concentric only strength training. And thirdly, we can look at comparisons that have been made between fast eccentric only strength training and slow eccentric only strength training. And all of these comparisons allow us to consider the differences that occur after strength training with greater or lesser levels of passive tension. So during full and partial range of motion strength training, it's fairly clear that passive tension is greater in the full range of motion strength training because that is where muscle lengths reach a longer length during, during the actual muscular contractions. And indeed, when we look at the results of such studies, what we tend to find is that the full ranges of motion cause greater increases in muscle fibre length. And they often tend to also cause greater overall increases in muscle size, but not always. But they do almost always cause greater increases in muscle fibre length. And this is because of the greater levels of passive tension. Similarly, if we compare eccentric only and concentric only strength training, uh, then such studies tend to show that the eccentric only uh, strength training causes greater increases in muscle fibre length than the concentric only strength training. And sometimes it also causes greater increases in muscle size, but again, not always. And this again is because passive tension is higher during an eccentric contraction than during a concentric contraction. And thirdly, when we look at the uh, studies that are compared eccentric only strength training at fast and slow speeds, what we tend to find is that the faster speeds tend to cause greater increases in fibre length. And again, this is because passive tension is higher when eccentric only contractions are performed at a faster speed. When we look at the force-velocity relationship of a lengthening or eccentric contraction, then we see that it is fairly flat. And this means that we can produce a similar amount of force when the muscle fibre is lengthening, regardless of whether the fibre is lengthening at a fast speed or at a slow speed. But this doesn't mean that the contribution of passive tension or passive structures to overall force production while the muscle fibre is lengthening is the same regardless of whether the fibre is lengthening slowly or quickly. In fact, as fibre lengthening speeds increase, the contribution of passive tension also increases because tightening is viscoelastic. So the faster you try and elongate tightening, the more it resists. So as we increase our lengthening speeds, the contribution of passive tension increases and the overall force velocity relationship remains fairly constant because the contribution of active uh, force producing elements, the actin myosin cross bridges, actually decreases. As the lengthening speeds increase, their ability to produce force decreases, just as in the uh, force velocity relationship of concentric contractions, but to a much smaller degree.